I'm Larry Anglisano reporting for AvWeb and Kid Planes Magazine. You know, one of the gotchas in building your own airplane is the avionics you bought earlier in a project are ready for the museum by the time you're ready to pull it out of the hangar and taxi test. That's not really the case with Garmin's GNS 430W and 530W navigators, but they're not cutting edge either dating back to the late 1990s. Now luckily Avidyne has an easy solution with its new IFD 440 and larger 540 slide-in navigators. It allows you to keep the wiring and the sheet metal tools in the toolbox. I recently visited Avidyne's Boston area headquarters to see how that's done. Now the follow-on video I'll go flying with the 540-440, but in the meantime Tom Harper is going to tell us how to transition to the new boxes. All right, with Avidyne's uh, new retrofit stack of avionics, we've really uh, gone after the retrofit market, and specifically we see a real opportunity for the uh, kit plane, the home-built market for these products, including the IFD 440, where uh, for those of you that are familiar with the uh, Garmin 430 and 530, we've made these products plug-and-play compatible so that now you can, uh, if you have a 430 today, you can literally pull it out and plug in a, a 440 and easily configure it and be off and running in a matter of uh, 15, 20 minutes even, believe it or not. We've added some cool new features, touch screen. Of course, it'll give you WAS if you didn't have WAS. Uh, it's, it'll be your path to ADS-B for GPS position source. And of course, we have uh, FISB and traffic coming in with our remote mount boxes. We also offer a, a, a Wi-Fi and a Bluetooth is integrated into the box so you can integrate with a Bluetooth keyboard and enter in your flight plans remotely. This makes it really handy if you're 440 slightly off center and you're instead of reaching for it, you can do it right from your knee board or on the yoke of an airplane, whatever, however you're configured. Uh, we've really uh, spent a lot of time engineering the products to make them easy to use from the pilot's perspective. That felt a lot better. Yeah. So once you've reinstalled the 440 into the rack, now what we're going to do is put in our jump drive and start the box in maintenance mode. So at startup, it's going to recognize the USB drive and that is enough to activate it into maintenance mode at startup. Once we get in there, then we can go in and configure all of our ports. Okay, so here we are on the, in the maintenance mode. Now there's other things you can do, but for now we're going to configure. So you can use the aux button. It's a two-way rocker. You can move across to configura configuration tab, or you can just touch the tab to jump right to it. Here's your Airink 429 configuration ports. Uh, when you set, installed your 430 originally, you had to configure it for 429 and 232s, etc. We've intentionally laid out these pages identically to the 430 so that it's uh, very familiar to you. Once you get into a given page, push the button to turn the cursor on. Now you can change the data within the field, whether you have a high speed or low speed bus, well, depending on which device you have connected to it, you select the appropriate device. Move down through the list of, of ports, the input ports and also output ports. Next up is turn the cursor off. We can go to the next page. Here's the 232 ports. Excuse me, you can do the same thing. Select the input and the output uh, for each of the 232 ports and move your way through and configure appropriately. In a multi-box uh, installation you always uh, reserve uh, 232 port 3 for the uh, cross sync between the two boxes. Once you go there and then you can move through uh, your system configuration, your panel lighting. Okay, to pair a Bluetooth device, in this case we have a Bluetooth keyboard, from the maintenance mode you go into the configuration tab and let's go to page 12 which takes you there. Now, there's previously been a, a device paired, but let's start a scan for the new one. I turn on my keyboard. Be sure to push the button on the back of the Bluetooth device, in this case a keyboard, so that it'll send out a signal. Once it finds it, you select stop the scan. Now you want to pair it, so you click the pairing button. It'll give you a four-digit code, which you type in to the device and enter and now you see the check mark that they are in fact paired. After the unit is powered up, the first time you go to use the Bluetooth device when you push a button you will get a permission screen that shows up 
that makes sure that that's what you want to do is allow remote control. Once you allow that, of course, now you'll have access to uh, use it, loading waypoints, etc., from the keyboard. And off you go. Because the IFD 440 and IFD 540 are plug and play with your old Garmin units, you can trade those old units in and offset quite a bit of the upgrade cost. The IFD 440 has a list price of $14,995 and it's certified and available now in shipping. Same with the IFD 540, the list price is $16,995 and again it's available as well. For more information, contact us at avidine.com. Now you can read more about Avidine's IFD 440 and 540 slide-in navigators in a future issue of Kit Planes magazine. Reporting for AvWeb and Kit Planes, I'm Larry Anglosano. Thanks for watching.